The damage models in War Thunder Naval are vastly different than other naval games, like World of Warships, as War Thunder's models rely on crew counts and buoyancy in order to determine destruction. In War Thunder, your ship is comprised of numerous modules whose destruction can diminish your crew count, affect your ship's performance, or lead to your ship's abrupt detonation. Knowing these modules' purpose and effects can enhance your ability to know what to target on enemy ships in order to disable specific functions, or know when to repair the damage on your vessel to bring your ship's performance back up to par. It should be kept in mind that fires will prevent the repair of affected modules and can lead to further damage if they are allowed to remain. These modules can generally be summed up into three categories based on what their destruction affects. Mobility, firepower, or just general functions. We will be starting off of course with mobility affecting modules as these will be the most noticeable as when your ship suddenly starts losing speed or is unable to turn, well, you'll find yourself a much easier target for the enemy team. The first of these I'd like to talk about are your boiler rooms, transmissions, and propellers. Destruction of these leads to a significant decrease in your vessel's overall speed, and if you lose all of your ship's boilers, transmissions, or propellers all at once, it will lead to your ship slowly coming to a full stop. This can also affect your ability to turn if the steering gear is damaged as well. Destroyed engines and transmissions will also significantly impact crew counts. Moving on from that, we have smoke funnels. This is a fairly short one as destroying these slightly reduces the ship's top speed. It's nothing really major in the grand scheme of things. Up next is your bridge. The destruction of the bridge will slow a ship's response to turns and changes in speed, increase the turning radius, and will decrease your crew counts by a moderate amount. After that, of course, we have rudders. Rudder loss leads to the ship having a much longer and slower turn, as it has to use its engines to make up for the turn instead of its rudder, assuming your engines aren't damaged as well. After that, we have flooding. Flooding will reduce the overall mobility of a ship based on how much water it has taken on. It can expose vulnerable parts of your ship via listing, basically making your armor null and void, or outright sink it if the flooding is left uncontrolled. And lastly, for the mobility affecting modules, we have hull sections. These are a newer feature to naval, and the destruction of these sections typically requires a lot of damage or a large internal explosion or something like a torpedo. When enough of these sections are destroyed, a ship will start to slowly take on water without the ability to repair the leaks. Destruction of further sections speeds up the intake of water until the ship eventually sinks. The larger your ship is, the more sections it typically requires to be destroyed in order to start this process, with the first bow and the final aft sections not counting towards this number. These don't appear in any x-ray of your ship, but are shown under the ship status UI in the bottom left corner of your screen during matches. And with that we can wrap up the mobility affecting modules and move on to the ones that affect your firepower. The first and most noticeable one of these is your turrets. Losing a turret causes a small to moderate crew loss depending on if it's an AA emplacement, a secondary battery, or a main battery. Until repaired, the turret will not turn or elevate its guns and the guns themselves are unable to be fired, though they will reload and be ready when the repairs are finished. If a turret does catch fire though, the fire can spread downwards into the ammunition elevators and cause further damage. Moving on from your turret, slightly smaller are your barrels and breaches. Losing a gun barrel or a breach causes that specific gun to have a chance to misfire. Misfires will prevent the gun from firing, and it will have to wait a few seconds to try firing again. It may also cause a loss of shell velocity or accuracy, especially if the gun barrel is damaged. After that, we have ammunition elevators. Damaged or destroyed ammunition elevators will cause their associated turrets to have a slower rate of fire and can moderately decrease crew counts. 
fire set in these elevators can spread downwards to shell rooms, magazines, and other ammunition storage areas and cause massive amounts of damage through detonation, which is your biggest threat when it comes to these elevators. Moving on from that, we have the aforementioned shell rooms, ammo storage, ready-to-use ammo, torpedoes, depth charges, rockets, and mines. The destruction of these typically causes a small to moderately large explosion, which can damage your hull sections, cause flooding, cause fires, destroy nearby modules, and severely diminish your crew count. In most cases, it renders the associated turrets devoid of ammo, even after repair, until these storage areas are resupplied at an objective. The size of the explosion is heavily dependent on what kind of ammunition was in the associated module and how much ammunition it contained at the time of the explosion. Sometimes taking less ammo is the smarter option, or in the case of some of the depth charges, rockets, and mines in the game, it's better just to not take them at all. Next on the list we have your magazines. Destruction of a magazine typically causes a complete detonation of your ship. Taking less ammunition can make your magazine size smaller and reduce the chances of it getting hit, but a lot of times, even if it does take that hit, it's just going to explode and take you with it. And lastly for the firepower section, we have the torpedo launchers. These are similar to turrets. The destruction of a torpedo launcher will disable movement or use of the launcher until it is repaired. If the launcher did contain a torpedo when it was hit, the torpedo could detonate and cause further damage to the surrounding modules, much like the shell rooms and everything else. It's just a lot easier to do because torpedo launchers typically don't have any armor. And now we can move on to the function affecting modules. These are the modules that don't really qualify into the other two categories, but they still do have an effect on your ship. The first of these I want to talk about is your fuel or coal bunkers. These themselves act as extra or spaced armor and just lose this effect when they're destroyed. They don't obviously contain any crew and they don't really have any other effect on the game. Next on this list is a bit more important module which is your pumps. Pump destruction increases the amount of time it takes to remove water from a ship but does cause very little crew loss. Basically, it makes it a bit harder to repair your flooding, and if you don't have any pumps, you're not going to be getting rid of that water. Up next on the list is your fire control room, range finders, and fire directors. Destroying these can disable the ship's ability to range find and estimate leads on other vessels, or hamper it by increasing ranging times and decreasing accuracy. It has little to no effect in arcade as the new aiming system doesn't really seem to care if these modules are lost. The fire control room can cause slight crew loss if it is destroyed. After that we have compartments and crew loss in general. Compartments are sections of the ship other than the annotated modules that contain crew. Losing these decreases crew numbers based on the location in the ship. Personally, I'm not sure if there's a good way to view these or the crew counts contained in them as they don't really show up on any x-ray in the game. Enough crew loss overall though will eventually lead to the ship sinking automatically, usually at around 7-10% to of crew remaining, with the sinking process speeding up as the percentage drops further. The next module is a fairly simple one, and that is the radio room. The destruction of this lowers the distance that a ship can communicate spotted vessels with teammates or receive information from them. It's once again not super handy for arcade, but probably fairly useful for realistic. And last but certainly not least, we have the catapult or float planes. Destroying these removes the ship's ability to launch planes and causes a small launch in crew. Fairly simple if you think about it. But overall, that's the gist of the major modules on your ships that make up the damage model in War Thunder Naval. Their destruction doesn't just decrease a magic health pool number, but does have extra effects on your ship based on how important that module was to the functions it was performing. I do hope this helped you guys out. 
please let me know if you did get something out of this. And good luck out there. I'll see you in the next one.